You're watching Unreal Ant Gaming. This is Gohan from Dragon Ball Z. You want to see me turn Super Saiyan? Or should I take it to the next level? I'm also the narrator, too. Next time on Dragon Ball Z, make sure and smash subscribe to Unreal Ant Gaming. With a brand new Dragon Ball Super movie looming over the horizon, currently in development right now, the future of the Dragon Ball Super franchise following the tremendous success of Dragon Ball Super Broly is looking brighter now than ever before, along with the tremendous popularity from the Dragon Ball Super manga and having to follow through with the Galactic Patrol Prisoner arc, the Dragon Ball Super franchise looks very promising going into the near future, and with Akira Toriyama having to further confirm himself that he is working on the next big Dragon Ball Super Super project along with the Dragon Ball Room and Toei Animation, one must beg the question, is it possible for us to see more of the OG villains from the Dragon Ball franchise make a return and be canon within Dragon Ball Super, primarily one of the most popular characters discussed in recent years, that being Cooler, and the fundamentals, benefits, and impact a character like Cooler would have if, and only if, the next Dragon Ball Super movie were to be centered around him. As once more, if you guys are new to the channel, I do encourage you guys to smash that subscribe button if you guys love Dragon Ball and anime, as well as giving this video a big thumbs up by slapping that like button down below if you guys are simply stoked, ready, and excited for the next Dragon Ball Super movie, because yes, we are going to be getting another Dragon Ball Super movie following the events assumingly after Broly and the Galactic Patrol prisoner arc, but right now, at this current point in time, there is no further detailed confirmation or story analysis involving anything of what's going to happen in the upcoming movie itself other than the team itself behind this project are looking to make this movie bigger, badder, and more impactful than how Dragon Ball Super Broly was. And yes, although the Dragon Ball fandom want to see different characters be introduced, different villains having to serve a purpose, and with that idea in mind, essentially anything can be made possible so as long as it is approved by Akira Toriyama, and based on what we've seen from Frieza towards the end of the Dragon Ball Super Broly movie, along with Frieza's motives and intentions, and knowing the fact that we've seen what Kula could do and we've seen what he's capable of, if Toei Animation and Akira Toriyama were to rewrite his character and introduce him in the form in having to serve a purpose in being Frieza's partner in this movie against Goku and Vegeta, it could prove to be pragmatic, but at the same time, it could also prove to be detrimental to the overall franchise if, and only if, the character is not written in properly. Now, at this point, any one of the OG villains that we've seen in Dragon Ball can actually return turn and make their debuts in Super S canon characters such as Lord Slug, Janemba, Bojack, Android 13, Cooler, and just like the difference in seeing Broly from Dragon Ball Z and then comparing him to Dragon Ball Super, what Toei Animation and Akira Toriyama could ultimately do is rewrite the Cooler character to make him, well, that much more cooler when up against Goku and Vegeta. Now, we're going to be setting the stage for various different circumstances as to how they can introduce the Cooler character, as I do have a Dragon Ball movie number two playlist located down below in case you guys want to check out some of my theories concepts and ideas i personally came up with for the upcoming dragon ball super movie now circumstance number one could be introducing cooler as an exiled or forgotten family member to where frieza is asking his men if any one of his relatives are still alive within the cosmos only for them to come across a signal or come across a squadron of people to where they ultimately bring frieza back to his older brother cooler but even then, if they were to introduce a concept to where Frieza is requiring his brother for help, they don't have to make their relationship solely based on revenge, they don't have to make their relationship tied in to one having to have more privilege over the other, there could be a sibling rivalry going on between an older brother and a younger brother, and that could be further established in a Dragon Ball Super movie to where at first, maybe Cooler has no interest in working with Frieza, maybe Cooler wants to be left alone, 
in dealing, buying, selling, and trading planets on his own, building his force, growing his army, and doing his own thing, until further manipulated by Frieza himself in getting Cooler to finally join forces with him. And the purpose, the main reason as to why Frieza would want to trick Cooler in working with him is because Frieza knows that he can't defeat Goku and Vegeta alone, so he comes up with an elaborate plan to use his brother in order to finally get rid of Goku and Vegeta, which could ultimately work in Frieza's favor, but Cooler would surely be far weaker than what Frieza is by comparison, so similar to what Frieza had done in Resurrection F, he could go as far as to simply help Cooler involve by training with him, while at the same time also growing stronger himself. Remember, Frieza had made a tremendous leap in power with only four months of training in ROF, so if he took more time to do that with Cooler, then both of them would arguably become more powerful than anyone could possibly imagine. Now, once that scenario is introduced and Goku and Vegeta are forced to wage war against the Brothers of Destruction, then that would unquestionably be one of the most intense showcases to witness in having Vegeta Vegeta fight Cooler while Frieza fights Goku, or have Goku fight Frieza while Vegeta fights Cooler. Now, hypothetically speaking, would the concept of Golden Cooler be a bit too cheesy? Well, kind of, but although we've seen how awesome Cooler looks in Super Dragon Ball Heroes, I think I would rather see a different evolution outside of his brother Frieza by having a golden form and perhaps giving Cooler something different, perhaps maybe a silver or platinum-like form that gives Cooler a different feel rather than having Cooler simply adapt and copy Frieza in having another golden form. Which again, you can't really rule out the possibility of a older character having to be introduced because King Uyoku back on June 4th, 2019, went along to state, and I quote, we are steadily working towards the next Dragon Ball movie. Since Broly was way too strong, I think maybe next time things will head in a much different direction. This time around with Broly, we raised the bar with many different proportions, so we're trying not to burn out. From here on out, I think Dragon Ball will continue, so please look forward to it. As of course, Hayashida also weighed in by having to state, and I quote, When we raised the bar from the movie, we came to realize a few things. The staffing, casting, and various other things for the movie were so good that we felt it can't get any better from this, but due to this experience, we'll make things even better the next time. As of course, King Uyoku continued, there were a few things we couldn't achieve this time around, so I think next time the results will be much better. Please look forward to it. So what better way or concept than to have Frieza actually seek out help in basically wrapping up the story of Frieza in wanting to destroy the Saiyans because assumingly enough this is going to take place far after the events of the Galactic Patrol prison arc which can only mean that at this point Goku is willingly able to tap into Ultra Instinct Omen at will as well as Vegeta perfecting his spirit control as seen in the manga which would make Goku and Vegeta that much more dangerous by comparison to a hypothetical cooler in Frieza, but by having this dynamic be introduced in showcasing a two-on-two -two scenario, perhaps maybe even a two-on-one scenario if Goku and Vegeta are left with no other choice than to fuse to fight Cooler and Frieza, would that only go as far as to prove how powerful this duo is, and that both Vegeta and Goku as individualistic warriors still can get the job done. Now, this also doesn't mean that the narrative has to remain the same in a sense to where Cooler has to behave like Frieza, because what they could ultimately do is introduce an element of betrayal in either having Frieza use Cooler and kill him by the end just to simply prove his point, or vice versa and have Cooler kill Frieza in further having to establish his dominance within the universe in proving himself to be the superior member within the family. Which at the same time they could ultimately go in a different narrative and have Frieza be vile, disgusting, ruthless, and evil, while his brother remains the total opposite in not wanting anything to do with Frieza's reign, but more or less remaining neutral in a sense to where, if there is a call to action, then Cooler will respond. And realistically speaking, no matter what direction they end up taking Cooler's character in, if he were to be introduced in Dragon Ball Super, as good of a character he may be in being reimagined within Super, you're still not going to be able to please the entire fandom because, well, subjective biasism. But even then, 
Cooler's character doesn't have to adapt the same way we've seen him adapt in Dragon Ball Z movie number 5, to where he never cared about his brother, to where he never had any motives outside of finding out that Goku was the one that defeated Frieza, but more or less here, perhaps maybe he did learn of his brother falling to a Saiyan, but he simply doesn't care, because like the old saying goes, you get what you ultimately have coming, and that's exactly the MO that Cooler has once stumbling across his brother. Now, just like Broly in the Dragon Ball Super movie, they could ultimately wind up changing Cooler's design, which I really don't think should happen, especially for his final form, if they were to introduce his final form to begin with, but more or less kind of add or take away specific things that would allow him to stand out in looking more intimidating or introducing something that makes him stand out that much more in comparison to Frieza because when taking a look at Frieza, one would immediately notice that he's really not that intimidating, so they could introduce this factor by allowing Cooler to feel and look a certain way by comparison to his brother that would make him the focus point in looking like the actual threat when comparing him to his brother. So I don't think the overall design should change, but realistically speaking, if they were to introduce the character, then something's bound to change when it comes to his overall design. Now on top of Frieza having to be there during the Tournament of Power and seeing everything what Goku and Vegeta and the rest of the multiverses have been through, along with actually being there to see Gogeta fight Broly in action, Frieza by now mostly knows of every single Super Saiyan transformation, mostly every single technique, including fusion, so there's always that chance for Toei Animation and Akira Toriyama to introduce an element to where Frieza actually potentially fuses with his brother in creating a situation to where now, Goku and Vegeta as individualistic warriors have no other choice but to then use a higher power or perhaps even fusion of their own to combat the likes of a potential Cooler and Frieza fusion. And again, that concept in and of itself does boil down to direction, and depending on Toei Animation and Akira Toriyama's direction, at this point, if they wanted to choose to write in a fusion between the two, then they could ultimately do that. But even then, Cooler is one of the many few original Dragon Ball villains to be featured in two separate movies, of course, The Revenge of Cooler and Metal Cooler, and to that is a testament of Cooler's popularity along with the overall narrative they could introduce. By having this inclusion of the character and knowing the fact that Frieza is so desperately trying to play catch up to Goku and Vegeta, it really then begs the question on whether or not Cooler should become more powerful than Frieza in a potential new movie involving him, because if Cooler were to supersede Frieza and everything he had done to get to where he's at currently, then what's the point of even having Frieza around to begin with if Cooler is going to be the strongest antagonist that Goku and Vegeta have faced? Which is what's really tricky about the Cooler character because you don't want to introduce Cooler as being someone overly superior to Frieza because then what's the point of having Frieza within the film if you're going to further insert the narrative that Cooler can easily take on Goku and Vegeta without his help? But then again, how would Cooler even know about Goku and Vegeta if he was not already informed by his younger brother Frieza? To where unless they want to go in a different direction in having Cooler already know of Goku and Vegeta's existence, but never really having the need to go off and pay them a visit, could they only bring that narrative to light? But then again, if they were to somehow introduce more of the OG characters from the original Dragon Ball movies, then Cooler would without question be a very interesting character to add, and actually one of the many few that could actually make sense when looking at the Frieza character because you can't really have Cooler be inserted without some narrative or connection to his younger brother Frieza. But by the end of all of this, I want to get your thoughts in the comment section below on if you guys believe that by having Cooler be inserted in the next Dragon Ball Super movie, would that only be better than what we've seen go down in Dragon Ball Super Bro? and if by some chance we were to get Cooler be introduced in Dragon Ball Super, then how would you guys personally have him be portrayed? Would you have him be introduced as the long lost evil brother that hates his family? Would you insert this idea of Cooler having to be a solo mercenary? Or would you have an entirely different concept for the character itself? Thank you all so much for watching guys once again. If of course you guys are new to the channel, then I do encourage you guys to smash that subscribe button as well as giving this video a big thumbs up by slapping that like button down below if you guys are simply stoked, ready, and excited to hear more information and finally find out what this new Dragon Ball Super movie is going to be because I'm telling you all right now, whatever this may end up being, it's bound to be bigger, badder, and more destructive than what we've seen go down in Dragon Ball Super Broly. Again, if you guys also want to check out some of the previous 
concept ideas that I made for this upcoming Dragon Ball Super movie, then I do encourage you guys to check out the official Dragon Ball Super movie number two playlist located down in the description box below. It would really mean a lot to me. So again, thank you all so much for your time. It's only a matter of time before we start hearing rumors and rumblings and get more information as to what exactly Toei has planned for the Dragon Ball Super property. So again, thank you all so much for your time. I want to get your overall objective feedback on Cooler. If you guys want to see Cooler, if you guys think that perhaps maybe Cooler should survive by the end, if Cooler should be obliterated, if they should do fusion. The concept ideas for this are so vast that essentially anything can happen. So again, thank you all so much for watching. Thank you all so much for your time. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, all that good stuff will also be located down below and I'll be seeing you all down in the comments and in the next video. Take it easy guys. Peace. And the quick little reminder before you guys go, if you guys are unaware, I do have a second gaming channel located down in the description box below. So be sure to head on over to Unreal Royale and hit that subscribe button along with turning on all notifications as to there, you guys will find all different kinds of gaming content that you will not get to find on Unreal and gaming titles and video games such as Grand Theft Auto, Call of Duty, Gears of War, Dragon Ball Z Dokkan Battle, Dragon Ball Z Legends, Dragon Ball Z Budokai Tenkai, G3, Minecraft, Blair Witch, and many other retro games on that channel. So if you guys are into gaming, then make sure you guys subscribe over on Unreal Royale. I want to thank you all so much for your time, and I'll catch you all in the next one. This is the Galactic Emperor of the Universe, and of course I'm here to tell you to subscribe to Unrelent Gaming. Also follow Unrelent Gaming on these social media platforms to stay connected at all times. And if you don't, then very soon you will all be dead! <laughs> oh, did someone say unrelent gaming? Oh my god. The fuck, Zarbon? Put on some clothes! Well, why don't you put on any clothes? What? I don't need clothes! But, uh, Jesus Christ, that's huge! <laughs> what, Broly? Freezer. Uh oh. Prepare to die! <laughs> <laughs> that I'm the biggest Unreal Ed gaming fan. This is my moment. I'm a part of his notification squad. Universe 7 can have all the fun. I just want the food. And don't forget to leave a comment on this video. Show some love for the best community on YouTube. <laughs> K -k -k -k